Welcome to this step-by-step -step course on learning Salesforce integration. What do we mean by Salesforce integration is that when we need to integrate Salesforce with a third-party application or integrate to Salesforce organization or maybe integrate Salesforce with a mobile application, there could be n number of such scenarios where you will need to integrate your Salesforce org with another application. Now, before diving into the technical aspect, the SOAP, the REST, the HTTP callout, these are the different technologies used for integration. Let's first understand what are the various ways to integrate with Salesforce or what are the various requirements which an integration could have. So when we talk about integration, there are primarily three types of integration. One is user interface, then we have business logic, then we have data integration. The best example for user integration could be the Facebook applications, which we use within Facebook, the games or the third party application. So basically you feel like that that application is in Facebook but in actual that is residing on a third party server. User interface integration is basically one great way to surface various applications inside Salesforce with uh, little or no redesign of each individual application. It provides your users a single point of entry into multiple applications. So basically you are on Salesforce but you might be accessing or using any third party application without realizing that because the user interface of that application has been redesigned to match with the interface of your Salesforce. But here we do not talk about any web services or anything. When we talk about web services that falls under business logic and data. In business logic integration, it uses Apex web service for inbound and Apex callouts for outbound messages. It typically handles a scenario where business logic is spread across several applications to implement the complete end-to-end -end business process. And then we have data integration. Data integration is one which uses SOAP APIs and REST APIs as per the requirement of the client or the requirement of the project. It typically handles data synchronization requirements where one application in an enterprise architecture acts as the primary source and another acts as a target source or vice versa. So one could be target, one could be source or it could be both ways that in some situation this can be target, in some situation the other can be target. Let's go more deeper inside that. First, when we talk about business logic integration, it basically helps to extend the business logic present in force.com with outside plat. In the case of inbound logic integration, it is handled using Apex web services. So when somebody is calling your Salesforce or so that is done through Apex web services where you write logic and expose it as a web service with external application. It gives you flexibility to add custom logic before modifying the force.com standard or custom object data. It basically requires knowledge of Apex classes. So when we create a web service class, it is basically a global class. Why it is a global class? Because it needs to be accessible across all Apex scripts and not just the source Salesforce application. It basically becomes the container class for everything else. Then inside that we have an inner Apex class that forms the actual request message of the WSDL. We will talk about WSDL and all in the coming videos. The variables which need to be accessed by other application through WSDL, all those things come inside Apex class. Then within that Apex class, we have a Apex method, which is also exposed as a web service. It basically defines the data mapping. Okay. So we have the variables declared in the class. Inside the method, we have various data mapping that we create variables for temporary or permanent variables for both the applications. And here within the method, we do the one-to-one -one mapping. Since the class is of type web service global class, it, a visual can be generated out of that class. This was when our Salesforce is our target. Let's say you want to call another web service. So in that case, you will have to take web service for those applications and you need to consume them and then convert them into a code which you can then hit or then you can call. So basically that is done through Apex callouts which in which enable invoking external web services that utilize WSDL or REST services. To generate callouts, you need the you need to import the WSDL into Apex or you need to write HTTP RESTful service classes. Consuming the WSDL document provided by the client application automatically generates the Apex class. This Apex class handles the rest of the part 
लाइक कंस्ट्रक्टिंग द सोप एक्स एम एल वाइल इन्वोकिंग द वेब सर्विस डेटा ट्रांसमिशन एंड पार्सिंग द रिस्पॉन्स यू कैन इवन मैन्यूपलेट द एच टी टी पी हेडर वाइल सेंडिंग आउट अ मैसेज देन वी हैव डेटा इंटीग्रेशन इट बेसिकली हेल्प अस इन मेंटेनिंग कंसिस्टेंसी इन द एप्लीकेशन डेटा बिटवीन मल्टीपल सिस्टम दैट नीड टू बी इन सिंक्रोनाइजेशन वन वे वी कैन अचीव टॉकिंग अबाउट रियल टाइम सिंक्रोनाइजेशन ऑफ डेटा बिटवीन सिस्टम इज बाय यूजिंग सोप एपीआई सोप एपीआई बेसिकली लेट्स यू क्रिएट रिट्रीव अपडेट और डिलीट रिकॉर्ड ऑन एनी स्टैंडर्ड और कस्टम ऑब्जेक्ट विथ मोर देन ट्वेंटी डिफरेंट कॉल्स SOAP API also allows you to maintain password, perform searches and many more things. So you should use SOAP API in any language that supports web services. It helps you to integrate when you need to have the response in a bulk data format. So SOAP API is still till date the most used way of integrating Salesforce with any third party application be it say uh, be it SAP be it SQL server now this integration can also involve lot of other activities like white listing your IPs there could be a middleware involved like if you are integrating Salesforce with SAP there could be a middleware like SAP PI in between so you need to integrate through that middleware then you need to pass in through the network of the client uh, infrastructure so you might need to whitelist your ips on the server so there are a hell lot of activities which need to be done outside the web service and outside the salesforce development so you need to also be in constant touch with your network or local it team whenever you are doing a salesforce integration Okay if you want to integrate your systems using SOAP API as discussed before it will include a usage of a WSDL file now how do you get WSDL file by default salesforce provides you couple of WSDL options to download natively from the force.com platform itself or if you want you can generate individual WSDL from your web service classes as well depending upon the client requirement but most of the time the enterprise and the partner visual provided by salesforce itself will solve much of your requirement now how to get the visual from salesforce when you are on your setup on the left hand side search for api click on api and then it will take you to a new page here there are a lot of visuals available but primarily we will be working with either enterprise visual or partner visual in 90 to 95% of your uh, projects or real life requirements there is always a confusion that which visual to use while integrating a platform with salesforce whether we should go for enterprise visual or whether we should go for partner visual so i will clear your doubts here the main difference between enterprise visual and partner visual is that enterprise visual is a static visual it is a strongly typed visual and is dependent upon the salesforce schema of your org while partner visual is a dynamic visual now how does that make difference to us what do we mean by that actually what happens is let's say today you generated for enterprise visual out of your salesforce platform you provided this visual to the another application which you want to integrate with salesforce but tomorrow next day you come here and you make some changes to your organization you add new objects you create new fields you delete some fields so those changes will not automatically reflect in the enterprise visual after making the changes you will have to redownload or regenerate the enterprise visual from here give the new visual to the other application they will have to reconsume it and reparse it and then they can use it so every time even a small change is made to your salesforce organization you will have to regenerate enterprise visual now the second we have partner visual lot of people get confused that partner visual means it is for partner portal no it is not for partner portal partner visual means uh, it is for the partner companies companies like accenture ibm scl who are the implementation partner of salesforce the it companies where you work who do the salesforce implementation they are the partner of salesforce so this visual is mostly used by them where they have to uh, do integration on day to day basis for different various organizations so this partner visual is more comfortable it is dynamically in nature means every time any change is made you can dynamically query the changes and you can get the updated result back you do not need to regenerate and reconsume partner visual after each and every change it will just have the authentication details so you can authenticate through that to your salesforce org and dynamically query the updates and get the result response back 
okay so it is always advised to go for partner vistal if you are going for a third party application or if you are developing the project for a client so every time a change is made you don't have to update but let's say if you are integrating your salesforce with with a system within your organization and you want a better control or better supervision kind of thing within your organization then you can go for enterprise vistal because it is more tightly coupled but it is static in nature the only drawback is that you need to re-update it every time a change is made okay